I was driving down the road looking for locations that we could come back to and shoot Barn Fight Hunter episodes. And I took a quick dart down this driveway and said, oh, a Triumph Stag. So I drove to the end of the road, looked around those neighborhoods down there by the water. The ocean's right down the road. And I said, I'm gonna stop and, and talk about this stag. So this stag, any stag, is, is kind of a casualty, uh, I think. They're great cars, they had no real audience. It was a car completely different than any other Triumph that had been made before or after. So this is a, a big Triumph. It's a four-seater convertible. This top comes off. It's got a V8 motor in it. And the V8 is not like a Buick derivative V8 or anything. The, the, the motor is a Triumph engine. Uh, it's an overhead cam engine. Just awkward and odd. It had a good exhaust note. And people who love them are gonna say, oh, what are you saying about my car? I don't mean to be uh, negative about it. It's just that it only lasted a little while and it went away, so there was really no market for it. So this one is a sad case. Uh, you can see you know, rust bubbling out here and there. Who knows why it was parked? It's probably because that motor, you couldn't find parts for it. If you'll take a look inside here, I don't want to open the door, but there's things living in here. There's a pile of uh, leaves and acorns and pine cones and stuff, so I'm sure they're pretty thankful for barn finds. It would take a big effort and a lot of money to revive a car like this. And if you're paying somebody to do it at $100 an hour, you'd be upside down uh, and exceed the value of the car just in labor costs. So this is driveway sculpture. It's funny how you meet people in the barn find world. I was oh, a few miles from here looking at an old Triumph Stag in a driveway. And I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing this video for uh, Barn Find Hunter. Can I use your car? And they said, man, if you want barn finds, this is friend Kerry we've got. Here's his address. Now, I would never would have found you on this long dirt road, at the end of a long dirt road in Owl's Head, Maine, unless I got a lead. So keep your ears open. Gary, thanks for inviting us over this morning. Tom, great to be here. And hello to all you viewers out there. If you've been watching the show for a while, you know that most of the barn finds we find are not in barns. They're in parking lots and they're in lean-tos, fields. This is one of the few barns that we've actually seen on this episode. Now we can choose our entry. Should we go for the big sliding door? Yeah, I think so. Okay, here's the big reveal. Is there Ferraris? Is there Maseratis? <laughs> There's Italian things and German things. But let me hit the lights. We actually have lights. Okay, cool. I'm going over here. Oop, there's the lights. All right, well, let's concentrate on the red car first here. So last on the road in 12. It's been off the road for 10 years. I've had this one since the early 90s. And what year is it? Uh, 77. I, was, I had Triumphs. I had a bunch of TR6s that I was rebuilding. And I opened a restaurant and I realized, I don't have any time to rebuild this yeah, car. Yeah. My dad had one of these in the early 80s. After driving the Triumph, I remembered, man, the Alpha had like roll-up windows and a five-speed, and it was less of a, of a pickup truck than uh, other cars, oh, yeah. it was sophisticated. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I was looking in the local trade paper, the local swap and sell called Uncle Henry's. I put an ad that said, looking for Alfa Romeo, or I was looking for a Fiat Spider. And this guy calls me up, he says, well, I got one of those Alfa Romeos. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, what's this gonna be like? So I go to meet the guy, and he's got, Giant American cars, mid 60s, like Chrysler, four doors, New Yorkers, Buick Electras. And in between all these cars is this little teeny alpha, you could hardly see it. My wife at the time, good friend and partner, Evelyn, said, Before you go there, Carrie, you don't always buy the first one. And it always wind up, you sell the first one, you buy like three more till you get what you want. I said, wow. okay, I swear to you. And we come back, the guy says, what do you think? I said, well, you know, I really want to think about it. And she's behind the guy going, no, no, write the check, get the car. I'm like, you know, I promised some people that I would really not work to buy this car. So then we went out and the car, she says, what are you crazy? Buy that car. It was like 30, 2,500 bucks or something. It was like 1993, two. Mm -hmm. So I called him up, he says, yeah, we'll take the car. He says, well, best bring a truck with you. I'm like, why is that? Well, the extra engine and a spick up pump and all kinds of other crap came with it. So we drove it around for a few years. I put a top on it. My son and I did the interior. And uh, my intention is to, uh, now that I'm gonna be on TV, this is now a famous car, so the price of it is gonna go way up. No, I do wanna restore this one and that one, but what I've learned is that uh, I cook food well and other people fix cars better than I do, so that's the game. So right here. Ah, oh, the, be the Beamer. So you told me this was a 1600. Yeah, it's a 1600. Um, but it's got 2002. So let me just explain, a 1600 was a 1600cc engine. 
in a small sedan that BMW made. And then there was the 2002, which was a, a, a two liter, a newer, a newer model. Yep. Uh, so why does 1600 have a 2002 logo on it? Well, this was a California car, and, I, and I, when I bought it, they had taken out the 1600 engine and, and put a 2002 engine in it. Okay. So when we got it, uh, this is supposed to be the family car. Go figure. It needs basic rust repair, and it needs a shave and a haircut, and it's got uh, a local guy at Auto Works in... Uh, Freeport, before he had AutoWorks, put a five-speed in this thing. We have a Weber, three-series radiator, three-series brakes, mm -hmm. uh, low numerical axle ratio. So this thing cruised along 80 with about, you know, 2,000 RPM. So this was a daily driver for you? Oh, yeah, this was a daily driver. Except these cars are so well-balanced, they are terrible in the snow. Like, terrible. Uh -huh. And who would want to drive this in the snow anyway? She's a sweet car. And it's odd that, you know, you don't see too many of the sunroof uh, ones like this, the coupe sunroofs. Yeah, so this needs to be just ripped down and yep. and sandblasted or dipped. It's it's actually quite solid. Like all the shock towers and all the stuff are totally solid. It's all surface, mm -hmm. like the front fenders, you know, some rusting on the roof. But the thing is totally solid. Typically, this is where these things rot out is around the shock towers. So you, did, did this drive when parked as well? Oh yeah, it was having. Um, little of a head gasket leak, I mean, a, a valve cover leak, and a lot was going on. So I said, we just park it, and you had those things go. I know, I'll get to it in a couple I'll of weeks. Get to it. And it gets started up from time to time to keep all the oil going through it. But now what's your intention for this one? Well, I want to restore this one, put some modern air conditioning in it, and uh, go across the country with my son in it. We had a trailer hitch on it. I told this little teeny trailer with like all of our little, our little teeny blow up boat and everything. And every Monday, we'd go off to Lake St. George. So this is a lot of childhood memories oh, for him. Oh, wow. And so, as I remember, you have, what, maybe one interesting, two interesting vintage motorcycles? Let's go. Take yeah. a look at the old Moto Guzzi. Let's go. Yep. All right, what do we got? Well, I have all kinds of things in here. We have some modern ones, but I think what you're looking for, this one here is a Moto Guzzi. It's a 150cc. This one I got out of, well, out of a barn in Appleton, Maine. And this is their ISDT commemorative edition from the mid 60s. And the ISDT is the International Six Day Trials. It's off road, it's all day. It's not a speed event, it's a time trial event. And Moto Guzzi won the class and they made 175 of these to commemorate that. That's all there are. That's all there is. And it has all kinds of interesting features besides this. It has things like this, if you have to take the wheels off and change your tire, the thing to hold on to yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. So you can just put a, a backward socket or a wrench on it, box end wrench, and turn it off. And there's interesting things like the spacer on the wheel. Same build, build deal back here. And the spacer is on this little teeny chain so you don't lose it when you're changing the wheel and the mud. No kidding. So all kinds of little tricks for the ISDT. So it's got 4,074 miles. Now, now this headlight is not original to this okay, one. Okay, okay. It's the original style, but it came from the one over there, which is a Stornello of the same vintage. So you got those old things in the woods. We might as well take videos of those as well. The oh, yeah, 57 but, Chevy. Oh yeah, the Chevy and the 63, yeah. Uh, yeah. The 63 Chevy out there. Yep. So here we are in the woods. Now, there's a story behind this wagon. Oh, there is, okay. So the Benner family that used to live here uh, for since the 40s into the 90s, they used to take this car and drive down to the back field at night, wait for the deer, hit the lights, and then they had supper. So this one has some history here. Well, you guys know I love wagons and I would do almost anything to bring it back a wagon from the dead, but this is dead. This is dead and I wouldn't touch it. But, but somebody right? needs those door handles, Tom. They be. need that tail light. They need that bumper. There's a 57 Chevy convertible over there, believe it or not. All right, so you have a 91 Alpha as well. So this 91 Alpha 164S has about 50,000 miles on it. So this is a, a 164. Oh, wow, that's a nice yeah, this one. has the aluminum three liter V6. That's like the 2.5 in the previous one. Now this is a front wheel drive, this one, which is not always appreciated by the Cognizante, but it's the last Alpha that they sold in the States before their recent comeback. She's a sweet old girl. Wow, so how long have you had this? 97, I think I bought and what, it. And what year is it? 91. Five speed. Five speed, it's the- uh, Nice body, is that original paint? places this actually got stolen in cape may new jersey i mean the kids that that stole it drove it like a block and landed it on the beach and that was like whatever 98 oh while wow, you owned it oh yeah wow. those punks boy nice car so i never would have found this house and this guy unless i 
kept my ears open to another guy five miles from here. So keep your ears open if you're hunting for old cars. Happy hunting.